words that simply say, you are an unceasing spiritual being with an eternal destiny in God's great universe. Example A of what they were actually talking about. Um, and this is just how Dallas entered ministry situations. He entered it um, with the expectation that if, if God and his kingdom aren't going to show up, then, then he's in trouble. So that means that um, if he did a wedding, if he's going to meet with people, if he's going to do a class, uh, he, it, it's like, well, God, you've got you've to help out here. And it's a very Augustinian concept of, of ministry. Um, and he would often also use the word grace uh, to describe it. So a minister needs to be full of grace. Um, and, uh, and it opposes itself then to um, philosophies of ministry that rely more on, sort of, since I said grace, uh, on the flesh. Now, I'm, I'm using flesh there, and Dallas would use it not in a negative way, but just to describe sort of human natural resources. Um, and so, these are things like everybody has something to boast about in this area, the ability to read a crowd, the ability to see what, how a person really kind of ticks, the ability to tell a joke, the ability to, with, with words and so on and so forth. Um, now, uh, these things are not bad in themselves, but they can really tend to get in the way. And it, Dallas would actually diminish his natural abilities uh, in order to sort of make room for God to be present in, in the, what he was doing. So he was capable of far more rhetorical finesse than anybody really knew about him. And he just didn't, he just didn't, he just, and, and Paul, I don't think I mentioned Paul, Paul is really, I think we'll maybe mention Paul later, is really an example here for him too. Paul, as you remember, um, sucked at speaking. <laughs> and and C.S. Lewis even says uh, Paul is a is a bad writer. <laughs> um, but but the, you look at through the effects of what Paul is doing, and it's and it's just incredible. Um, so he he uh, he really coveted that. Another way he put this was uh, he put it as our resources in ministry are always adequate. Because our resources in ministry are spiritual. And so we're never going to lack in uh, the right kind of personality. We're never going to lack in the right kind of uh, enough money or enough people to get our, our work done. Um, the resources, our resources are potentialities in the kingdom of God. Um, so that's uh, next, uh, instrumentalities of ministry. Um, now there are really three here. My paper actually, I only put two, but I... Remember, there's really a third one here. Uh, one is going to be the tongue for him, symbolically meaning. So a minister, it's, it's, it's really hard for us in, in our day to, uh, it was always hard to really recognize the emphasis that Dallas put on, on preaching. This man really thought that preaching did a lot. And you don't, you miss that with sort of the disciplines bit and all of that, but um, he, as a young man, was reading Mark 4, 25 to 29. Uh, this is the parable of the farmer. And uh, it says there that uh, the farmer went out and sowed a seed. And then um, night comes and, well, and, and some time. And he goes out and lo and behold, there's, there's crops. And the part that really got Dallas is, is it says in there, he doesn't know how this happened. <laughs> right? It's just a complete... The farmer doesn't, doesn't get it, but he knows that he's, he's done this. And then the word, or the, sorry, the seed is the word of the kingdom. And so this is, this is how Dallas uh, really worked with people, is he really sort of trusted uh, guess, uh, the word of God, the word of the kingdom, uh, to do the heavy lifting. And, um, and this is, this is uh, where uh, Paul comes in as well. Paul just just goes around the Mediterranean and he doesn't, he doesn't do market research, he doesn't have a great plan or a program or whatever, he just shows up and he's Paul and he talks. And he's got just words for people. So, um, 
really, really not <laughs> what we do today. Um, now the other part of it, uh, the other instrumentality is uh, the, the body. Um, Dallas has this talk, it's an old talk that he gave in, in South America where he talks about the matrix of mission. And mission here he really means ministry, but uh, the matrix of mission is the, or he d also defines it as the womb of mission. And a matrix or a mission is that out of which something arises. And uh, so that w out of which ministry arises is the human body. And there's this verse from uh, in John on um, he that uh, believes in me out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. And Dallas really nails in, on, really zeroes in on this sort of belly thing. Belly is uh, guts. Um, the divine conspiracy, there's this part where he sort of disciplines to put on a new heart, and he really wanted to put new bowels in there, and his editor said, uh, that's not, but he really thought bowels. <laughs> he really thought bowels. Um, and this, this just means that a, what a minister can do, and that Dallas did this, you have countless testimonies of his ability to just be with people and through his body to pass on, let's just sort of give it a power to people. And by this, this, this is sort of love, joy, peace, uh, faith, and, and to the laying on of hands is another uh, scriptural passage which he really invests a lot of time into thinking about and how the minister or people in ministry can use their body to transmit power to other people. Um, uh, human psychology, there's, there's three things here. Um, one is uh, the difference between knowledge and belief. I think I'm just going to try to do two of these, but the difference between knowledge and belief, um, we kind of, Dallas, Dallas's readers are used to him putting a, an extra emphasis on knowledge, um, but belief uh, really is, is very important in ministry because uh, belief, you want sort of belief and knowledge to work together, but belief in people uh, is connected to their action. And so what a minister is really doing, what Dallas is really doing is something like belief therapy with people. And that means identifying not just what they, what they know, but what do they actually believe, which is usually connected to how they're actually living. So a minister needs to help identify these things in people. Um, but actually helping somebody else to know something is a little bit easier to handle than helping somebody else to believe something. And here uh, he really, this is where the Augustinianism sort of comes in again. He really sort of counts on uh, God to help him uh, do this and he's going to rely on these sort of instrumentalities of the Word of God and then the human body to, um, to help people really believe what they hopefully already know. Um, the mind would be the third sort of instrumentality that I didn't mention, but he really thought ministers should be educated. They should know, they should know what they're talking about and that helps with the knowledge bit. Um, the second was uh, the tremendous value of the will. And I'll, I'll skip over that um, and just give you this last one, which is Dallas approached other people through their minds. Um, he was, uh, in terms of pedagogy, a cognitivist. And this, this is hard for people to really figure out because of all this sort of emphasis on the body and on habits and on the soul and how these things affect us in our, in our personality. But in terms of how he would work with other people, he worked with people through their minds. And what that meant is that he didn't develop praxis models of, of ministry in which he would sort of say, okay, now we're all going to do this here, and you do this, and then we'll sort of talk about it. Um, he didn't develop experiential ways of doing things. He really thought, I'm going to um, teach people, and I'll teach them about who they are and how they work psycho psychologically, and then I'm just going to leave it up to them. And uh, that sort of release, the releasing also is, has to do with also the tremendous value of the will. So he did not want to sort of force spiritual formation on people. He's very, and I'll, I'll finish with this, very Benedictine or Quaker in the way that he worked with people. Just, um, he just wanted to connect people with Christ and he just would sort of try as well as possible to sort of step out of the way or soon as possible. He didn't set up sort of spiritual direction, long-term spiritual direction relationships with people. 
It's all just ad hoc, improvised, um, and then just lets God take it from there. Thank you.